working on any of our products or topics, please email me. Uh, I think I showed my email address before. It's jheenick at isograph.com. And without further ado, I'll pass the controls over to David. David, you on the line? I am. Okay. You should have controls now. Okay. Um, so hopefully now everybody will be able to see my, my desktop. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is David. And uh, as Jeremy's already said today, I'm going to be showing you how you may be able to go about modeling uh, a deliberate attack on an onboard computer system on a vehicle. Uh, using an attack tree analysis. Now, um, the tool I'm going to be using to do this is our own attack tree plus, which you should be able to see now uh, displayed on the, on the desktop. Um, generally speaking, anyone who is already familiar with things like fault tree analysis and with event tree analysis should be very much at home with the stuff that we're going to be talking about today. But for those of you who aren't, I'm going to try and keep things at quite a high level. Uh, so, you know, we won't dig too deeply into the technical side or mathematics or anything like that. I just want to give you an idea of how you might go about modeling a scenario like this using some of the tools that are available. Now, um, as Jeremy mentioned, re recently there's been some attention in the media uh, on attacks on uh, onboard automotive computer systems. Uh, made wirelessly uh, via two or three different uh, attack vectors. So what I'd like to do today is show you how you can build a model to maybe determine uh, the frequency with which such an attack might result in, say, a fatal accident, and maybe the risk uh, due to those uh, due to those attacks, attacks, uh, and also how to work out, you know, where are the the the, uh, the biggest weaknesses in a system, uh, what are the biggest contributing factors to the probability or the frequency uh, of these catastrophic problems. Um, so with an attack tree, much as uh, you would with a fault tree, the first thing you would do, of course, is identify uh, the, the problem or the event of interest. So as I mentioned, uh, what we want to look at is the frequency with which say, a deliberate attack on an onboard computer might result in uh, a fatal traffic accident. So the first thing I'll do is create a top event uh, that represents the event I want to look at. Uh, so I'm going to go to Add, and I will add a new top gate. Uh, and you see that appears in the diagram. Now, um, I'm going to modify uh, that. I'll just double click, and I will give it uh, an appropriate ID. I can also give a, a description as well. Uh, when you're building these types of models, it's always a good idea to include as much descriptive information as you can. It helps with understanding and traceability. So if you ever need to come back to this model in you know, 18 months, for example, you'll know exactly what each part of the model is about. Um, I'm not going to do that, so I don't want to bore you by having you watch me type all afternoon. So I'll uh, just call that top gate faithful. So the next step is to determine what are the direct causes of this problem. So my model, which you know is based on uh, just some articles that we, we've looked at on this subject, I've kept quite simple. As we're going along, probably you'll think of lots of details I've missed. But that's, that's a good thing, but what I want you to do is to think about uh, what we're looking at today. So um, what would be the, the direct causal factors for uh, a fatal accident? Well, uh, one I thought might be uh, driving in a, a high-risk scenario. You know, maybe you're driving on a busy highway, or maybe you're driving on a, a dangerous road. Maybe you know, it might be a hillside road with no barrier or something like that. Uh, another, and of course, on the other hand, uh, the fatal accident would be caused by the loss of control of the vehicle by the driver, and the two of those things together would result in uh, a fatal accident. Now, 
what I'll do uh, next is create gates to represent each of those causal factors. So I'll click to add a gate, and I'll click on the parent gate and create two gates. I'll then clear out of the add mode. Now, the first gate, I'm going to call that uh, high risk, and that will represent the probability with which uh, I'm, I'm driving in a high risk scenario. And the other, I will call control, which might represent the probability that I lose control of the vehicle or the frequency with which I lose control of the, ve of the vehicle. Now, as we mentioned, uh, those t we may require those two factors to occur together in order for a fatal accident to occur. Now, in the real world, maybe that's a little bit of an oversimplification, but for our purposes today, I'm going to say, if I lose control of the vehicle in a high-risk situation, then there will be a fatal accident. So, I need to modify the logic of this tree in order to mimic that behavior. Currently, my top gate is an OR gate. That's what this symbol means. That means that this fatal accident will occur if I'm in a high-risk scenario or if I lose control of the vehicle. But that's not the correct logic in this, in this situation. I want to make it so that this fatal accident only occurs if both of these uh, situations are true. So I'll double-click the gate change that to AND logic and click OK. So now a fatal accident will occur if I lose control of the vehicle and I'm driving in a high risk scenario. So we can now break that down further. For example, what would constitute a high risk scenario? Well, there are a couple of things I mentioned there. One was driving on a busy highway. Another was uh, driving on a dangerous road. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at that and say, well, OK, I can look at the probability of driving on a busy highway. I can't really break that down any further. I, there's no more detail, really, that I, in which I can look at that. So instead of adding another gate, I will add a primary event. That represents the most basic type of event that could occur in my model. So I'll add a basic event, and that one will represent the probability of driving on a busy highway and I'll add another to represent the probability of driving on a dangerous road. So uh, I'll call that event highway. I will call this event uh, dangerous, that's a dangerous road. And in this scenario, the all logic is correct because I'll be in a high risk situation if I'm on a busy highway or if I'm driving on a dangerous road. So uh, next, I'll break down the uh, control gate. So I'll, st I'll uh, let's take a look at what might cause me to lose control of the vehicle. Well, one would be that uh, a hacker, for example, gains access to a, a critical system in my, in my vehicle. So I would lose control uh, if the hacker gets access to a critical system and uh, if the attack on that system affects my ability to control the vehicle. So I'm going to add a couple more gates. And uh, I'm going to call this one access. So the hacker gets access to the onboard computer. And this one. I'll call critical, and that represents the probability that the hacker then attacks a, a critical part of the system. And again, that will be AND logic. So now, if the hacker is able to gain access and they attack a control critical part of the system, then uh, that could lead to a fatal accident in a high risk scenario. So what we're going to do next is take a direct look at the access uh, side of the tree. And this is where things really start to get a lot more interesting. So when we were looking at the articles uh, that were suggested to us, 
Um, there seem to be two particular attack vectors that have been uh, investigated. Uh, one was uh, hacking into an entertainment system which required a, a laptop and I, I guess various custom bits of software. The other uh, was access via an ODB dongle, uh, an insurance dongle, uh, which uh, it ha had actually been demonstrated could be done with a conventional mobile phone. Uh, there was a demonstration, for example, of somebody uh, activating headlights uh, or activating windscreen wipers simply by saying, sending a text message to this dongle. So we're going to have a look at those two uh, methods of accessing um, the onboard computer. So what would cause uh, or what would allow or what would cause the hacker to gain access to the system? Uh, on the one hand, the onboard computer system would have to be uh, in a state that is not secure. And on the other hand, of course, someone would actually have to attempt an attack. So on the one hand, we have an insecure system. On the other, we have an attempted attack on that system. So I'm going to add a gate. This one will represent uh, our computer not being secure against an attack. And then I will add a basic event. And that basic event will represent the frequency with which an attack is made upon that uh, onboard computer system. And of course, that's going to be and logic, because obviously, you know, if the hacker makes an attack but the system's secure, he won't get access. Conversely, if the system is not secure but no one attacks it, then no one has gained access. So that would be and logic. So I'm going to call that gate attack. And that's going to be the frequency of an attack on the system. And this one I will call not secure. So, as we mentioned, there are two possible vectors that we're going to be looking at today. One is uh, access via the entertainment system. The other is via an insurance dongle. So, again, my model is going to be relatively simple. I'm going to say uh, that if the, the that access can be gained to the entertainment system, if it has not been patched against that kind of attack. So of course, in reality, there may be lots of factors there, but I'm keeping it quite simple. So I'm going to add an event, and that will represent uh, the entertainment system not being patched. So I'll call that end patch. Then I'm going to add a gate to represent uh, access being uh, attained via the ODB dongle. So I'll add uh, another gate, call that ODB, and then this would, uh, someone could gain access to the ODB dongle again if the dongle has not been patched against attack, but there is of course the condition that the driver actually has such a dongle installed in their system because of course if there's no dongle then there's no access uh, via that kind of attack. So I'm going to add two events here, one representing uh, failure to patch the dongle and the other representing whether or not the uh, dong a dongle is actually connected to the onboard computer. And again, in this case, it's and logic. So we're saying that uh, an attack will get access if the system is not secure and that could happen if the entertainment system is not properly patched or if there is an ODB dongle connected and that has not been properly patched. So already you can see the tree is starting to take shape. Now um, just a, a little bit of advice here, I mean if you're working in a tool like this one you'll find that your tree can get quite large pretty quickly. Um, you can rescale the tree, but uh, I prefer you know, to uh, actually open up one of the gates and just page it. And that just lets me break down my tree into more manageable pieces. So I can have pages of my tree 
where I can look at the probability of access to the uh, to the system. I could have a tree where I can see the probability of an attack on a critical part of the system. Now, um, I'm not going to go any further now with actually building the tree. I think I've shown you everything, all the most useful aspects of that, how you use the top-down methodology to determine the intermediate causes of a problem and what are the most fundamental causes of that problem, and also how those uh, intermediate levels, those logic gates, allow us to show how failures interact with each other uh, in order to give that final failure, whether it's all logic or and logic or whatever else. So I'm going to skip now to the completed logic tree and then maybe we'll look a little bit more at the quantitative side of this analysis. So if you'll bear with me uh, for a moment, Okay, so this is my completed logic tree. You can see the high-risk scenario there as before. Uh, the access tree, again, the same as before. Uh, I've also added uh, the elements to the critical uh, part of the tree. So the, the uh, probability of an attack on a critical system, it could be a system that affects visibility or that uh, affects controllability. Visibility could come about due to an attack on the wiper system or an attack on the lighting system uh, during low light levels. And controllability could come about because of attacks on things like steering, brakes, uh, engine system, and so on. So hopefully the logic of that uh, should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we can see how those different failures interact with each other. So now what I want to look at, uh, again as we said, some of the quantitative sides of this analysis. Now each of the basic events, each of the primary events in my tree can have a probability or a frequency associated with it. So for example, uh, what's the probability that I'm driving on a busy highway during any particular journey? If I open up that event, you can see I have the option to select an initiator or an, uh, an enabler. Now, um, anyone, again, who has worked with event trees will be maybe familiar with this terminology. Uh, for those of you who aren't, uh, in a practical context, uh, an enabler is a system uh, or an event which, if it fails, will allow another event to cause a problem. So, for example, uh, if a fire suppression system fails, that would allow a fire to cause uh, fatalities as a result. Hopefully we'll see how that works in this context very shortly. But for the highway uh, event, driving on a busy highway, I've selected enabler, and enter the value of 0.1, a 10% probability. Now uh, I'm going to go now uh, down to the access tree again. Now you can see here things like we have the probability that we don't have uh, the system properly patched. So I've got 25% in each case. What's the probability of an insurance dongle being connected? So you might know, for example, that there are 2% of drivers in the United States who have a, an insurance dongle in their car. So you might say that probability is 0.02. Uh, but what I'm really interested in on this page is the attack event. Those other events were enablers. Uh, if those events occur, it will allow another event to cause a problem. In this case, that problematic event is the attack. If I open up the attack event, you can see I've selected initiator, and I've entered a frequency. So that's, I've entered a frequency of 10 to the minus 12 attacks per hour. So what this means is that if some combination of the other events in the system occur, and then the attack occurs, then we could have a fatal accident as a result. 
and the program can use the probability of those other events and the frequency of the attack event to calculate the frequency with which a, fat a fatal accident is expected to happen. So very quickly, if we look elsewhere, we can see uh, we've got probabilities set up for the other events as well. This P icon, or in the attack case, the F icon, tells me whether I'm dealing with probability or frequency from that particular event or gate. So there are a few other things I, um, we're going to look at, but before we do anything, uh, anything in that respect, what I'd like to do first is just run an analysis of the system. Now uh, here I can do that by si simply clicking on the um, perform analysis button and we get analysis complete. I'm going to take a quick look at uh, some of the fundamental results that we can get back. Now first thing you'll see of course is on the fatal gate we have a frequency of 1.4 e to the minus 14. So that's the calculated frequency with which we might expect a fatal accident as a result of a deliberate attack on the computer system. Um, so I, I, I think a, a little bit earlier I looked at a calculator and based on the rough number of cars in the United States, that would equate to something like uh, one fatal attack per 50 years per car. So again, whether or not that's accurate, I couldn't say for sure. This model is based entirely on uh, the articles we looked at and our, our own speculation. But hopefully that's not too far short of the ballpark. So that's you know our quick snapshot of the results. We can see more detail if we go to the results summary. So I can look at the fatal gate. Again, I can see the frequency of failure. There are some other things going on here which I'll talk about shortly. But what I'd like to look at first uh, is the importance. Importance, uh, this is what I mentioned earlier on. I said that one of the things these models can do is give you an idea where the weak spots are in the system, which events, which problems are going to contribute the most to uh, failure to frequency or probability of failure or an attack or catastrophic failure in your system. So here we can see that the uh, attack event, of course, is contributing the most. We would expect that because, of course, the attack event has to occur in every possible sequence of events that results in a fatal accident. However, we can look here and see, well, after that, uh, the failure to patch the entertainment system is the biggest contributor to this possibility of a fatal accident. So we might look at maybe uh, a, more, a more aggressive method of patching or maybe making customers more aware that, of what they need to do to make sure that their security software is up to date. Uh, and we can also see um, sensitivity information. Sensitivity is a um, basically a measure of how sensitive the system frequency or probability is to changes in the frequency or probability of that event. Now, the other thing I'd like to look at, the cut sets. This is useful in that it gives you a, a list of all the possible sets of events which, if they occur together, will result in a fatal accident. So, and I can see that the most likely uh, causes a combination of being on the highway, an attack occurring but I haven't got a patch, and the attack being made on the brakes. So I can see not only which events are contributing the most, I can see which uh, sequences of events are contributing the most. So all of that really relates to uh, the frequency of failure, but there are other um, factors we can take into account as well. For example, we can look at indicators. An attack on any system requires resources. The attacker may need to spend money. 
uh, acquire equipment for the, for the job. Maybe the attack is quite difficult, especially if they have to bypass security measures. You can use indicators to quantify uh, the lengths to which an attacker has to go in order to make an attack. For example, uh, we can specify an indicator like cost. I've got a minimum and a maximum defined. I can also define things like difficulty, uh, whether or not equipment is required, and there are also custom options as well. So if there are other factors you need to take into account, uh, you can do that as well. So where have I applied that? Well, let's take a look at access. So I've applied these to the patch uh, parts of the tree. So my logic here is that um, I'm saying, you know, I'm going to specify the cost, difficulty, and equipment required to attack the entertainment system or to attack uh, the, uh, the insurance dongle. So if I open up the end patch event, for example, and go to indicators, I might specify a cost of $1,000 for the equipment required to make this attack, maybe a, a difficulty of 5 out of 10, and the equipment, this is a Boolean uh, expression in this case, where 1 means special equipment is required and 0 means it's not. Conversely, uh, the ODB patch attack, the cost is a lot less because, as I mentioned, it was demonstrated this could be done with a regular cell phone. So if you have a few dollars to spend on a cell phone, you need no special equipment and the attack could, attack could be relatively easy. So when I run the analysis, the program can work its way up the tree and at each level determine what the cost or the minimum cost, the minimum difficulty and equipment is required to make this attack. So here you can see potentially someone could cause a fatal accident at a cost of only $100 and with relatively little difficulty. Now the way these numbers are propagated up the tree is customizable. Here I've chosen a relatively simple way of working it out. Now on the other hand, uh, we've looked at what resources go towards making the attack. What then will be the consequences of that attack? Now at the bottom on the left here you can see I've defined some possible uh, consequences for uh, whether it's the accident itself or some other uh, aspect of the uh, attack on the system. I've created safety consequences and I've created security consequences. You can see here my safety consequences relate to maybe different uh, levels of accident with different numbers of injuries or fatalities. If I open one of these up, say the moderate consequence, you can see I've entered a weight. The weight is a dimensionless value which represents the severity of that particular consequence. Usually this is a sliding scale. Uh, again, it's arbitrary, maybe zero is the best case and 10 or 100 is the worst. Sometimes though, people tend to think of these in terms of actual values. So maybe five is the number of fatalities and on the security side, this might relate to a relative uh, violation of privacy. So, you know, for example, somebody could access the details of past journeys or even get access to uh, phone contacts from the user's mobile phone if it's connected to, say, a Bluetooth uh, system. So I can then allocate these consequences to uh, gates and events in my tree. So for example, on my access tree, I've allocated a security consequence. So I'm saying that if the hacker gets access to the system, and I even without any of these other aspects of the tree, I can say if they are able to get access, immediately there is a security problem, even before they've attacked a potentially critical system. And then for the fatal uh, accident gate, I can specify a, a catastrophic safety consequence. So you can see, what you can see from this is that while my tree is primarily geared 
towards looking at the frequency of a fatal accident, I can also look at other possible problems as well, not just uh, fatalities, but also maybe security violations or uh, maybe environmental issues or even reputational issues. You can see here you can define quite a wide variety of different types of consequence. So how does that manifest itself in the results? Let's go back to our results summary and take a look at the consequence tab. I can look at the consequence and see the frequency with which I expect that consequence to occur. I can look at how much each of my events contributes to that particular consequence. So I could just as easily do that for the medium uh, consequence as well. I can see, again, attacks via the entertainment system contribute the most to uh, security issues. And I can also look at cut sets for individual consequences as well. I can also look at risk. Risk uh, basically quantifies the uh, well quantifies the risk to the system uh, from these different consequences. The calculation is very simple. The program just multiplies the weight of the consequence by the frequency with which that consequence occurs. So you can see here the total risk for safety consequences and the risk uh, due to individual uh, consequences as well. And uh, a lot of these parameters can be displayed in a plot form. Uh, if that's your preference, I can select plot and I might want to look at the contribution or the importance values. I'm just going to change my plot options and take a look at the fatal gate and then I can see uh, graphically how much each event is contributing uh, to a fatal accident and of course reporting gives you access to more uh, information again. So uh, to summarize what we've shown is that using a tool like Tactry Plus, we can construct a logic diagram, in this case an attack tree, by first defining the event we're interested in, in this case a fatal attack on a, an automotive onboard computer, and then using a top-down methodology, determine what are the causal factors for that event, right down to the most fundamental contributing events. Uh, the enabling events, which allow problems to occur, and the initiating events, the events that actually trigger the problem in the uh, once those other failures have occurred. And we've showed how we can use that then to determine the frequency with which an accident might occur due to an attack. And we've also shown how we can go a step further and look at the resources required to make such an attack and the risk we might incur due to such an attack as well. So um, that's everything I was going to uh, show you today uh, with regards to the construction of uh, an attack tree. Um, so yeah, I, I guess we can, um, Jeremy, throw things open to questions if you're happy to take over again. Yeah, we don't have any questions that need to be addressed so far. Um, Dave, did you get a chance to maybe show a quick report on this? Uh, certainly, yeah. Um, so I did briefly mention that you can construct reports. We didn't look at any, but um, you can see here there's a report button. I can uh, switch over to that. Uh, this gives us a report view where we can access uh, report templates. Now, the templates are um, files which, when you open them, interrogate your project and then display the information that you've requested uh, and those can be tables or plots uh, and even the diagram itself. So let's open some example reports, maybe we'll look at some results. 
and uh, maybe we'll look at some gate cut sets. So these are the cut sets for the uh, fatal accident gate, and you can see the frequency of each cut set on the right here. And of course, you know you can obviously dump these things into programs like Microsoft Word, PD, uh, PDF files, and so on. Also, you can view uh, plot reports. For example, the importance plot we looked at later, uh, earlier. You can open that as a report as well, and again, export to Word or PDF, or wherever you might want it. And uh, of course, perhaps the report you might most want, the actual attack tree, attack tree diagram itself, I can open that, and there's my attack tree, and each page of that tree is on a separate page of the report, so you can see there, the access tree is on page two, you can switch to page two and see the tree there. And uh, again, all these reports can be exported to various different formats. Uh, and of course, they can all be customized as well. So you can do anything from something uh, relatively trivial, like maybe having your company logo appear at the top of a report, to actually changing the data that's displayed here. Because of course, there may be other information coming from your project, which you want to display that isn't already in one of your existing reports. All of these reports are customizable, all of them are, are exportable, and, uh, and can be shared between different, uh, different colleagues. Okay, thank you, David. Okay. That looks good. As I mentioned before, if, uh, if you have any questions or comments on this webinar, uh, please feel free to contact me. Also, I look for suggestions all the time for future webinars. We try to do one of these every week, but sometimes it's every two weeks. But um, we definitely like to take topics from our um, audience. So if you have any questions or would like to see topics on other on Attack Tree or other software products, please let us know. Okay. Thanks, David. No problem.